Right, so with the help of Mark Gurman's new information, let's delve into the Apple Silicon transition and when we should see new Macs. But first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just tuck in. Right, so the first Mac Mark Gurman mentions is the one a lot of you guys have been waiting for, and that is the M1X MacBook Pros. So Mark Gurman says that we should see this new MacBook Pro launch in the coming months, and he's already said that we should see it between September to November, so I'm expecting an October slash November release right after the new iPhones. And this does make sense because we all know the M1X MacBook Pros were supposed to launch at WWDC, but because of many LED supply constraints, Apple had to push back the release, but now Apple's invested $200 million into mini LED production, and so I'm assuming that could sort out the production issues. And so fingers crossed we see no delays with the release later this year. Now as for details on the M1X MacBook Pros themselves, we know so much about these MacBooks already, but basically we should see a new design, mini LED, MagSafe, more ports, and also the M1X of course with 8 performance cores, 2 efficiency cores, up to 32 GPU cores, and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Oh, also, how could I forget, we're gonna see 1080p webcams on these new MacBooks, alongside better mics and better speakers. So yes, I'm looking forward to these M1X MacBooks. I'm just hoping there are no longer any delays with the release. Anyways, moving on to the higher-end Mac Mini, this is a pretty interesting situation because I was initially assuming we we're going to see the higher-end Mac Mini alongside the MacBook Pros launching later this year because they were both going to have the M1X. But I guess that might not be the case because Mark Gurman says the higher-end Mac Mini is going to launch separately from the MacBook Pro and he says pretty vaguely that it's going to launch soon after the MacBook Pro, so that could either mean a release later in 2021 or maybe an early 2022 release instead. Now, of course, if the latter is the case and we do see an early 2022 release, I do think there is a chance we could just see M2 in the next Mac Mini and Apple just add support for four Thunderbolt ports with M2 and cause it a day. You see, unlike the other higher-end Intel Macs, the M1 does beat the older Intel Mac Minis quite easily, and so the only drawback right now is the fact M1 is limited to two Thunderbolt ports, and so if the M2 does fix that, there really is no need for a higher-end Mac Mini. Apple can just replace the entire Mac Mini lineup with the M2, and that alone should be way more powerful than the outgoing Intel Mac Minis. Now, yes, I know there is a chance we could see the M2X in the Mac Mini instead, but I do think that's pretty unlikely because we would have only seen the M1X MacBook Pros a few months before and I don't think Apple's going to release the successor to that chip so soon. So yes, I don't think we're seeing the M2X if it launches in early to mid-2022. Anyways, delving into what we know so far about this Mac Mini, we know we're going to get a new design with a plexiglass top that could allow for a two-tone look like we have on the iMac and as for the specs, well, either it's going to be identical to the M1X MacBook Pro, or of course, it's going to be identical to our next machine, which is the M2 MacBook Air. Right, so Mark Gurman actually gives us no details on the M2 MacBook Air's release. He just says 2022, and that it should support MagSafe, which we already knew about. But thankfully, Min Chi Kuo has said that we should expect a release in mid-2022. Now this is also surprising news because initially I was assuming that a March event with the new MacBook Air would make sense, but of course mid-2022 highlights a WWDC release and that would be pretty odd since the MacBook Air is consumer focused. But like Minchi Kuo says, because of the mini LED issues, it seems that Apple's having to push back a ton of their products and so while the MacBook Air might have initially been scheduled for a release in March or April, it might have been pushed back to WWDC because of the supply constraints. Now, I do want to say that if we do just see M2 in the next Mac Mini, then I do think Apple will release the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 Mac Mini together like they did with the M1 models back in November. And so, yes, we could maybe see both these products launch at WWDC 2022. Now, as for details on the M2 MacBook Air itself, it should have a design that's very similar to the 24-inch iMac. So white bezels and fun colors. 
And along with that, we should see the M2 chip, which should have a similar layout to M1 with four performance cores and four efficiency cores, but a slightly more beefier GPU. And by the way, do note that Mark Gurman says nothing about the base MacBook Pro in this report, and so much like other rumors have suggested, it does seem like Timothy is going to be snapping that base MacBook Pro out of existence. Anyways, we now come to the last two Macs, the big boys, and that is the larger iMac that some say might be the iMac Pro and the Mac Pro with Apple Silicon. Right, so Mark Gurman pretty blatantly says the iMac's Apple Silicon transition will be over by the end of next year, so that means we're not going to be seeing the bigger iMac anytime soon. Now this does make sense because a few weeks ago Mark Gurman did say there is a chance we could see the M2X in the new bigger iMac and of course like I said Apple won't release the M2X months after the release of M1X and so a release at the end of 2022 does make sense because the M1X MacBook Pros are launching at the end of this year. Also we have heard reports about Apple pausing development on the larger iMac to focus on the 24 inch iMac and we have also heard from other sources that a 2022 release for the iMac Pro is more likely. So yes, sadly, this does seem pretty likely. Now, as for details on the iMac Pro, we actually don't know much. Now, assuming the design is going to be similar to the 24-inch iMac, but of course, with black bezels and a space gray option. And as for the M2X, I'm assuming it's going to have a very similar layout to M1X. But of course, instead of the A14 cores, we're going to see the A15 cores with the higher base clock speed. And while that's all we know about the iMac Pro, and that's another clue as to why the release is a little later than expected, since of course, if it was releasing anytime soon, we would know so much more about it. Anyways, we finally come to the big daddy, the Mac Pro with Apple Silicon. And well, Mark Gurman pretty vaguely says, that we should see it later next year as well. Now, personally, I think it makes a ton of sense to release the Mac Pro alongside the iMac Pro, so expect an October event where they focus on the M2X SoC. Because of course, with the Mac Pro, what I'm assuming Apple's gonna do is give us multiple M2X processors and put them together to give us the monster performance we've heard about with the Mac Pro because apparently there's going to be a 20 or 40 core CPU with either 64 or 128 cores of GPU power. So that's going to be absolutely insane. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how impressive those Geekbench results are going to be. Now do remember this Mac Pro is going to be a lot smaller than the current model because of the efficiency that comes with Apple Silicon. So expect a design that's very similar to the Power Mac Cube. So imagine a few Mac Minis stacked together. That's going to be the size of this new Mac Pro with Apple Silicon. And yeah, that is the Apple Silicon transition in a nutshell. We should be over by November 2022, which is quite a wait. But the performance upgrades are definitely going to be worth the wait. Anyways, tell me in the comments below which Apple Silicon Mac are you planning to buy very, very soon? Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the icon above on details regarding the iPad 9. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps.